morning everybody we just left home we got to the truck you can see everything still all over the bed in the back i have to organize that but i'll give you one guess as to what i'm gonna say next all right i'll give you a second Did you guess? I'm in a rush. Bingo, Yahtzee, you win. I'm in a rush. But I wanted to share a special little thing here. My, when I got to the shop this morning, batteries on the truck, dead. Now I can't figure out what I left on. So my batteries might be going. This is the second time now that the batteries have just unexpectedly died. But it was really cold when I brought it in there. Remember it was full of snow. I had to get some, uh, fix some wiring on the lights and stuff because the snow had uh, buggered up some of the wiring. I, I fixed that all. Now, uh, my batteries were dead. So I wanna give a shout out to Jim right now. Thank you so much. This is my booster pack. It's a 6,000 amp Avapow. Is that how you pronounce that, Avapow? I got to test this thing out today. Fired up my truck like that. It was amazing. I just, see here's the booster cables in here, right? You just hook them up into here. I had this thing charged already. My batteries were completely dead. Couldn't turn over the engine. Tick, tick. Whoa, truck started up just like that. It sounded just like, I don't know what was with the sound effects there, but uh, amazing what these little things can do. This boosted my old, my old truck, just like that. So again, last time I got sort of stranded in Brainerd. You guys remember that I had to call a tow truck, spent like $250 or whatever it was in getting a boost. I now never have to worry about that again because if that happens like it did just now in my shop, like I got a big booster pack in the shop, like a big booster itself, but I didn't need that. This jumped the truck just fine. And this isn't an ad for Avapower or anything, but this is a brand that works if you want my opinion. Jim has been such a good friend to us over the years and has helped us out countless times. And I'm so thankful, so thankful for everything you've done, Jim, to make our lives easier and to make sure that we never find ourselves in a rut anywhere. There are really good people in this world. I'm speaking to everybody now. You see the worst of them on TV all the time on the news, don't pay attention to that. Bad news sells. The majority of people out there are amazing people and there's a select few people out there that are just godsend. They're just amazing people. Jim, you're one of them. Now he sent me this booster pack just to make sure that I would never be stranded again. And I just wanna let you know now, it worked. I wouldn't have been stranded, I was in my shop, but at least I got it tested in the shop. So now I know if I ever am out, out in the wild, out on the road, and I have a dead battery, I'll be just fine. So thank you very much. You wanna know something? I'm gonna brag on you a little bit here, Jim. But uh, I've never met him in person. We met over the internet uh, through my videos here years ago. Has it? What? How long has it been? Like ten years? And every time we found ourselves in a time of need, he's reached out. We never had. We never asked for anything. We've actually said no on a couple of occasions and said no. We, we we can do this on our own. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate the offer to help. But we got this. But every time we have been sort of in a snag or in a rut throughout the years. He has always been there as, as a, a steady friend. Be like, hey, you need some help? I'm here. All the way back from when, remember our little wiener dog? Wiener, that's what we call him. His name's Frankie. Uh, when he had IVDD in his back and he had to go all the way to Saskatoon for surgery. And we had just bought a house. We had just drained all of our accounts. We were in a very bad financial spot, technically. We, we over... We went over and above what we should have done. We got into the house that we, maybe a little bit too much for us. We ended up selling it and getting, making money off the house. So it was, it was a good deal in the end. But we were right in a spot where we had sort of placed ourselves precariously on a financial cliff, right? We're just, we're like, we, we took a risk, we gambled. And the gamble paid off, like I said, we made good money off it. But right when we were on that ledge there, that's when one of our dogs 
decided that, you know, it's time to have some IVD. Well, he didn't decide. He had IVD, which is a back issue, and he had to go in for surgery, and it was, I think it was like a seven, eight thousand, ten thousand dollar surgery. We had no money. And so we had reached out and said, hey, like, this is something we weren't expecting. We were in a bad spot. Now, now we're in a much better spot for stuff like that to happen, even though we just did go through IVF, which did whew, put a bit of a weight on our shoulders, but we're doing fine. Don't worry about us. And uh, yeah, he stepped up and helped. Said, anything you guys need, just let me know. I'm here to help. He made sure that uh, we were able to get to Saskatoon, you know, everything was covered, that we were all all right. Friends like that, that, you know, we've never actually met in person, but they're there for you every step. They, they exist out there. And I, I almost get choked up a little bit talking about it because I've never even met this man. And yet he's been so kind and so nice over the years. And again, he saw that I had trouble with my truck, that I broke down once, that I had to pay $250 for a tow truck just to come and hook onto me and boost me. He said, no, 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 you don't gotta worry about that. He sent me a, a nice booster pack so that that would never happen to me again. Like, wow. Even when we say, no, 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 we got this, we got this. He's still there saying, hey, I know you got this, but here if you need me, you know? Thank you, Jim. This is what I'm trying to say here. You know who you are out there. The bottom of our hearts, like, wow. Thank you. You you are you're an amazing human being. This world needs many, many more people like you. I hope that I can pay it forward in full in the future to others around me. All right, with all that being said, I wanted to get that off my chest on the video here. So I want to let all of you know that there are such good people out there and you guys are all amazing people too. I hate seeing that the news is filled with all the worst people in the world because it makes it gives you a very negative opinion of the world, right? One big thing that I've learned being online here is that the internet is filled with amazing people. They're, they're just quiet. <laughs> it's, the, it's the obnoxious, loud ones that get all the attention, right? They're obnoxious, they're loud, and they're doing things that they sh shouldn't be doing and they get all the attention. Everyone's like, is this what the world's come to? What has happened to our countries, right? No. Our nations here, Canada and the United States, are still filled with amazing, amazing people. They're just quiet. They don't make a lot of noise. Make a plan and plan for the plan to change. The plans have changed. This is trucking, don't forget. So we're not going to Deep River Falls today now. Now we're going to Kenora, Ontario. And uh, there'd be pretty much nothing for me to do early next week. So I'm gonna grab a load today that I'm gonna deliver on Monday. That'll give me something to do to get next week started. And then tomorrow we're gonna to go to Thief River Falls and grab one load and come back with it. And then Monday morning leave with that other load we're picking up today. That's the best way to keep everybody busy and uh, make sure everybody's happy. That's the plan right now. We'll see if it changes again. And then 
for whatever reason, the load gets cancelled when the truck's already there. You know, got to pay the fuel to get there. So I did get reimbursed for the fuel, at least. Not really for my time, but eh, it was something. But it, that kind of stuff happens. Is what, what I'm getting at here is that it's... Uh, Nothing's ever for sure, for sure, until the freight is on my trailer, strapped down, tarped, and I'm leaving with it. And I get a good distance away. And then I deliver it. And then once it's delivered, that load, that plan happened. Sometimes you wish things could be a little bit more concrete, but you know, like right now my plan is to drive down this road in this direction until the shipper. Anything between here and there is still up in the air until I arrive there and then you get it. Must be nice those guys who work, you know, nine to five, or seven to four, whatever your hours are. Scheduled day, you get scheduled days off. You know when you're gonna be home. You get to go home and watch TV in the evening, see your family. I'm not saying this out of spite, I'm just saying, some of us, we gotta work 70 hour weeks. <laughs> it's a good thing I really like my job. Because there's no way I'd work 70 hours a week at a job I hated. There's no way. You couldn't make me. Okay, maybe you could make me if it was like a million dollars a year. Well, we'll talk, but uh, I have my price. Well, I arrived at a pretty decent time. What time is it now? One o'clock. Just so seems that a bunch of other guys arrived at a pretty decent time too. Three guys in front of me in the lineup, and then about four guys in the staging area getting loaded right now. Two guys in the tarp shed. And all of those trucks have got to get tarped, or loaded, tarped anyway, and out of here before I can tarp my load. <clears throat> and there's only two bays to tarp in. Now, I've said it before, in this uh, location where we pick up, uh, two tarp bays, if you do it right, the way you're supposed to do it is you go in there and they have a machine, a crane, that'll lift the tarp over the load for you. That's so that you don't have to get on top of your load. You're not allowed on top of your load here. They're very serious about that. So you get the machine to put the tarps over the load for you, then you tack it down in all four corners, make sure that it won't fly away, and then you move out of the tarp shed and you finish bungeeing it outside. The tarp shed is only there to get the tarps over the load. But so often, I'd say more than half the guys, well over half, they use the tarp shed as a place to do the entire tarp job, bungeeing, everything. Sometimes it's uh, a load that hangs over the back, you know, tagging it and flagging it. <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water. Man, but so, it should take you no longer than 30 minutes inside the tarp shed. You know, you throw the tarps over, ding, 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 ding. Get out of there, finish bungeeing it down outside so the next guy can come in. Because the next guy sitting outside, he can't put his tarps over his load until you get your butt out of there, right? Because he's not allowed to go on top of his load outside the tarp shed. So he needs the tarp shed so he can put his tarps over, get his butt out of the tarp shed so that the next guy behind him can get in there and do the same thing, right? And there's signs all over the place that say this, right? Like, the tarp shed is only to put your tarps over. Once you have it tacked down, that it won't fly away. Get out of here and finish tarping and bungeeing outside. And then big signs in there, right? Plus, you have to, like, there's orientation that you, that you go through where they tell you this, right? 50, 75% of the guys. <laughs> I don't want this to devolve into complaining. This is an educational moment. I don't, I don't have these all the time. I say I'm an entertainer, not an educator. The tarp shed shouldn't be more than 30 minutes a truck. Not three hours. Because imagine this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys getting loaded in front of me. Two guys in the tarp shed. Just the guys getting loaded here because they haven't started tarping yet. Seven guys. If they each took three hours, now two at a time, so two, four, six, three, six, nine. That'd be nine hours that I'd have to wait if they all took three hours. So they don't all do that, but nine hours and then I have to start my load yet. So just remember, be uh, 
courteous out there. A lot of places have these tarp sheds. A lot of places for liability reasons, they don't want you on top of your load. They don't want you falling off and hurting yourself. First of all, they don't want that to happen here. They don't want you to get hurt. Second of all, it shuts down all of operations when someone gets seriously hurt, right? And it, it hurts everybody. It hurts everybody, us picking up the loads, it hurts them making the freight, it hurts everybody. So we don't want injuries to happen here. So wherever you go around North America and you find yourself a tarp shed, read the instructions carefully. I'm not going to say every single place is exactly like this one, but read the instructions carefully. And if there's people waiting to get in behind you, let's all try to do the courteous thing and get out of that tarp shed as soon as we can. I personally would really appreciate that if we did that. <laughs> so with all that being said, Seven guys in front of me. Let's say they're all pretty good at what they do. They don't take too long tarping. Uh, I should be out of here and well, oh, it's gonna be a few hours. I don't know if I'm gonna make it home for supper. It's one o'clock now. Oh, no, 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 I don't think I will. Even if I was getting loaded right now, about two hours till I'd be rolling out, I'd be rolling out here at three o'clock at the earliest of the two, two hour drive back. Gotta drop the trailer, bring the truck into the shop, park it, get it ready for night. Three. Or five, I'd be back on the so No, I'm not going to make it for supper tonight. That's disappointing because my parents are having, uh, what is it, string string spaghetti or some kind of... Oh, it's going to be delicious. We're going to go over there and have supper. I won't be able to make it. All right, so I'll show you my work. It's on a flat bed, so it's arranged a little differently. There's four lifts here, two on each side, four there, so eight, and then there's three stack in there. That's why I got that strap there. Keep my taps, uh, keep my tarps from flapping too much. I got this here to hold that back so it doesn't slip forward on me. Ugh. That's that, we're loaded, headed home. We might be home for a late supper. I might make it home. It's 3.30 now, 4.30, 6, 6.30. Ah, really late supper. We'll see what we can do. I probably won't make it, but maybe. Road for 178 kilometers. 
stairs. Been a day. It's always something. It's always something. I got old blue in here, but you can see that I look like a pack rat hoarder, which maybe I am. Oh no. I gotta get rid of some stuff. But all of the stuff that's over here was over here. I had to clear some space because, as you'll see here, this cable broke off or detached from up there. So there is a overhead door guy coming to fix this in the morning. So I just cleared some space for him here, moved everything over there for now. Didn't have time to work on anything on the truck. I was me well, not messing around with the door, but trying to figure out what was going on. Because first of all, I got here, the door opened just fine. And then when I tried to close it, it only went halfway. I was like, oh, weird, I didn't want to force it. So I brought it all the way back up, and then I brought it all the way back down. It felt a little harder than usual to bring it down. And then all of a sudden I heard the ting 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 of the this cable. It just detached. Is it broken? It's detached? I don't know. I'm not a garage door guy. I'm a truck driver guy. I do that. I don't do this. And I don't have time for this right now because i got to go home. Uh, I missed supper at my parents' house, but they brought supper to our house. So I want to go and catch them yet before they go home. And I want to eat some of their food. They brought some food for us. Very excited. So I don't have time for this right now. Repair guy's coming in the morning. This area is cleared. That's a tomorrow problem. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I'm going to run home real quick and grab some food. I have way too much stuff. I have way... Or maybe it just looks like a lot of stuff. And I just, I just need shelving and I need to organize it. We tried that once, right? I tried organizing it. It just sort of organized the mess. It went from a, a mess to an organized mess. Yeah, it's time to go through and purge. Get rid of all kinds of things that I don't need, like those helmets. I don't need those helmets. Those were from when I was younger and had a snowmobile and snowmobiling around. I don't need those anymore. I could, I like this for the quad. No, I'd buy new ones anyways. I don't like them. They're, they're not old, but uh, they're still good. I can get rid of them. Don't need to store them. There's no fire pit here. Why do I have that? I'll get rid of that. All kinds of, there's an old TV right there. Find a spot for that, maybe hang it on the wall. It is what it is. Okay, we'll worry about this tomorrow. Night, Blue.